there is a question that a lot of my students ask is, okay, I know how to play phrases, I know a lot of phrases, but I want to play it like my own solo. I don't know how to, to change from playing phrases. Do you think about phrases? You all the time. All the all time. The time. All and the time. how come you doesn't, you, you, you sound new every time? Well, I, that's, I, I, um, if I do, that's good. That's, I'm, I'm, I, I, that's lucky. Um, not only do I think about the phrases or how the phrases, will, I mean, I think about making phrases relate to each other. Um, I think about um, uh, phrases within the phrase. Um, is it going to be an uh, antecedent phrase followed by another antecedent phrase with a consequent phrase? Is it going to be, um, is it going to be a sequence? Is it going to be, uh, am I going to, am I going to pull something from the first chorus and the second chorus? Mm. Am I, how am I going to relate things together? You mean to take one phrase and repeat it? So yeah. we can talk about sequences for phrases. Uh, what do you, what, pick a tune. Let's just maybe play one, six to five. Okay. So it'd be easier All for right. the students like to rhythm changes. Sure. Yeah, like a rhythm change. G. G, okay. One, two, three, and... <coughs> sequences. Right? Yeah. So here's an example of um, thinking about phrases that have, um, uh, I guess what you might call, a, what, I, what I just described as an antecedent, antecedent consequence. Here's an example. One, two, three, <laughs> Right? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm literally thinking about that. So I had the antecedent phrase, da 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 Then I had another one, da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da, like a sequence. And then some things happened in between. And then we finished it with another one that, that, that kind of went with that. da 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 Right? So, I, I mean, I, I think about those things when, when I play. When so I it's, play it's enough to have two phrases to play a solo for a short chorus if you feel the rhythm and how to play Oh yeah, is the time over it, and how to only change? Well, that's that's what that's the neat thing about it is that is that you know even if we're just talking about arpeggios, you don't have to change very much to surprise somebody. Mm -hmm. Like if we if we're okay. just playing one, you know, two, three. And. <laughs> to surprise them because they're they know what's coming when it's a pattern right yeah so <laughs> right we can yeah. really play with it and play with the time and play with the direction of it and um, you know when you're especially on a guitar when you're doing something technical all you have to do is change just one little thing and it becomes a surprise because once once you get into some, the ear knows the ear knows where something's going. Mm -hmm. you know, we yeah. we've heard this music enough. We kind of know where something's going. But if you can find a way to add a surprise, make it go somewhere where the person's not expecting, I mean that's 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 the that's what makes it that's what makes it fun. Maybe this is a, also a good exercise to take a song, don't play chord scales over it, just try to sing the basic lines sure. and be able to play the basic lines over this song. Yeah. Sure. Very slowly. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I, I, sometimes I, I confess that on, on, on gigs, I will actually practice things. For instance, if it's a gig where I'm not really paying attention, I will actually practice entering on a different uh, beat mm -hmm. each phrase. The one, two. And one, and of one, two, okay. and of two. And three. Okay. You know. So, for instance, blues. Mm -hmm. One, two, three.
there. I just entered on one, and then the end of one, yeah. two, the end of two, three. You know, I mean, I, I literally waited until yeah. that beat came around mm -hmm. and decided whether it was going to be a pickup to something else, or whether it was going to be, you know, the, the start of something. Then sometimes I'll do it the other way, where I'll actually be thinking about ideas, and I'll start a phrase, and decide that my next phrase is going to start on whatever the last note of the previous phrase was, like this. One, two, three. That's not a good thing to do on a gig, but sometimes <laughs> you're playing background music and it doesn't yeah. really matter. And those yeah. are the types of things. But I can do this when I'm practicing too. Yeah, yeah, you know? of course, it's great um, exercise. Yeah, or you do it the other way around, where you where you start on you start on the and of four, and then go back to four, and, and learn to play different pickups. Mm -hmm. So you start to do pickups of phrases like this. So here's the and of four going backwards. One, two, two three. <laughs> Up from four going to one, then we did the end of three, and then three, and so we end up just kind of making longer pickup phrases, and then it starts to get you thinking about targets and where you want to where you want to start your phrase. Mm -hmm. and I don't know, just just little things like that. So there's so many ways to do it, and, and this stuff. Uh, and it, the, those exercises, what they're good for is is giving you um, you start to have more freedom. Yeah. You start to have more variety in what mm -hmm. you do. And you, you're not always starting in the same place. You're not always starting with the same voicing. You're not always starting with the same um, um, you know, place. In the, in the, in the, it just gets you more, it just makes you freer to, and it also makes you wait. It also, wait makes, you, it also makes you leave some spaces yeah. for things. Like that. I, will, I tell you, this is the answer for a question. And now I will tell you what the question is. Okay. I always see with students of mine, that they know, they know a few things, but they play very bad, not interesting solos. But I said, with what they know, they can play nice solos. Now I need to help them to play with what they know, the good solo. I don't need to teach them anymore. They don't, know, they don't scare, they know phrases, they have a little bit of technique, but they can do it. So this is the answer, how you can do the most of out you already know. Mm -hmm. Try to play it on the beat. On, yeah. Start it on yeah. the end of the mm -hmm. one and start it on the two. Think of a target with your phrases. Not just playing the, ta the phrases. Think about the target yeah. of your phrases. Yeah, where's, and, it, where's it going? Yeah. I mean, you know, if, and, you, if you get out there, you start something, and yeah. it doesn't, you don't have a, doesn't have a place where it's. If you don't have a destination, it's it's a, it, it makes it really hard to. Yeah. Uh, you, you have to think of the audience as somebody who's who's following you in a yeah. way. You're leading them. Mm -hmm. You're leading them, and if you don't know where you're going. Like you know. the men who play flute and lead the sheep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. But if you don't know where you're going, they're not going to follow you. Yeah. You know, and if they can tell you don't know where you're going, well, then they're, they're going to follow somebody else. <laughs> you know, so that's really what it's about. Just the, the the solo is is you know you want to you want it's a point in time, mm -hmm. and you want to hold the person's imagination to another point in time. Yeah, you're leading them there. Yeah, and you want to surprise him a little bit. Sure, of yeah. course, yeah. To play with his anticipations. Because if they if they think they know where, if they think they know you're going, then they're just going to go there. Yeah. They're gonna go there without you. They're yeah. gonna go. Okay, I know where he's going. Mm -hmm. And they're and they're, they're not they're not with you anymore. Evan, you know, someone wants to be better. He play every day. He mm -hmm. put his time. But you know, a lot of people they don't know exactly what to do. So they play scales, they play arpeggios. Can you help them build their daily practice so they can 
the, get the most out of it. The two most important things you can do when you practice. Um, one of them is just to be very focused, to make sure that you're concentrating. Um, if you're doing scales, you can't be watching television while you're doing them. Mm -hmm. You can't be walking around the room. When you're doing those scales, if you can do, for me, if I can do 10 minutes of very focused, I can be very focused on the sound that I'm getting, um, on the, you know, on the, uh, the attack that I'm getting. If I can be very focused for 10 minutes, then I can go for hours. If I can't focus, then, then the end is going to happen. The next thing, that the most important thing that you can do when you're practicing is not to think that doing things that you know is practicing. Mm. I mean, you know, if you're doing every, if you're doing things you know, that's not practicing. Okay. You know, if you're if you're adding new things, well, mm -hmm. that's 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 practicing. There was a there's a, a man who once told me, uh, "You're only as good as your worst key." <laughs> You're only as good as your worst key. Whatever the worst key, the, 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 whatever the key is the hardest for you, that's as good as you are. Yeah. Someone told me that you need to improve your re worst day. The Some worst kind of day, yeah, yeah. The, the worst day you are, this is your level. But I, I would say for anybody on any instrument, the two things that, that you just have to do is concentrate, and the second thing is to not practice what you already know. Mm -hmm. That's not practicing. Um, it's repetition, um, and then and then the the idea of um, the idea of actually practicing how to c connect ideas and things like that. Well, that's much easier to do with another person. I mean, you you can do it, but it's not the same as it's not the same as reacting to something mm. else that's happening. So if if there are two guys who learn together and they want to practice together, one can play the melody and try ways. To articulate the melody, and the other can play above it, and it can be a terrific, absolutely, terrific absolutely. exercise for yeah. two two guitarists to sit together. That's really the best. Wow. I think. Yeah, Evan, it was well. Thanks. It was fun. I always love talking about music. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. It was a great week. It was. We'll do yeah. it again. I promise. Okay, and thank you very much.